I'm camped in the Prescott National Forest and it's been raining the past couple days. I wasn't able to have a fire last night because it, well, it was just a torrential downpour. I couldn't see more than a hundred feet in any direction and it dropped easily two to three inches of rain overnight. When I woke up this morning, I could hear the roar of the creek. Yesterday it was five inches deep and a couple of feet wide. Today it's swelled to 15 times its width and easily four feet deep. I'm up near the headwaters, so it's not likely to get any deeper up here but downstream with the five or six crossings that I have yet to do it's gonna be impossible to cross even if I tried to cross this in my vehicle my vehicle would float and I'd lose control then there's a huge huge and I mean hugely long hill it's, it's where everybody brings all their quads and unloads their motorbikes and side by sides that's where everybody does it is right there at the bottom of the canyon and it's a big, long, steep climb up, 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 up. And then you turn around the mountain and go up, 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 up some more before you start going back down the hill on the other side. And I'm worried that if it's even remotely muddy, it'll be too steep for me to safely take the car up there because the, there's no tread on my tires. And if I start slipping and if I lose control at any point, backing up might not even be safe because of it's steep and there's no guardrails there's nothing there i'll just go right off the side i have enough water i have enough food i'm dry i've got clothes you know propane gas i've got entertainment i've got books i've got i've got everything except i can't leave one road is 20 miles to prescott over rough terrain which would be over more washes and drainages and that's just not going to happen uh, the main way out the way that i came in has got 15 feet wide water three or four feet deep running across the the main crossing it might be washed out the feelings that i've had are just i just feel like i'm i don't know how to describe it i just i feel so trapped so powerless, so isolated, and I just, quite a bit of anxiety. Every time it starts raining again, and, and every time the river comes up, my anxiety goes up higher, because I know that the, the ground isn't drying, and the river's not going down, and it, it, it kind of reminds me of when I'm sick, and I just want to get better. I know I'll eventually get better, but I have to suffer for days or a week before I get better and today I saw blue sky earlier today I prayed to God that it would it would stop raining and, and that I could get out of here and I haven't seen blue sky in four days it's just been overcast and gray the lights been muted and visibility is l reduced to I don't know 500 feet in any given direction so i feel like i'm this would probably be the closest it would be if i was actually living on mars and couldn't go home we have a flash flood warning still in effect until 8 15 tonight covers the whole valley because the rain is not going anywhere i guess this is just going to be an audio recording it's too dark for this to show up but I'm right down at the bank of the river and it's come up four feet. It's gonna come up over the edge. I moved the car because there's only two more feet before it comes up and floods right out where I am. The river's now 20 feet across. It's raining so hard. It looks just like snow, it's so thick. I spun out in a few places trying to get back up onto the road. I almost got stuck. I am now on the road and that's where I'm gonna stay hopefully the road itself doesn't turn into a raging torrent 
it was raining too loud and I got way too anxious to stay put so I had to have a look and it it's not looking good. Well, after last night's scare, when the water almost crested the banks, I I kind of panicked this morning and my stress level was beyond stressed. And I came driving down here the next morning, my car literally just like sliding in a sled down a snowy hill down the road. And I came down to this point and I realized that it would be on foolish to try and pass over this. Those darker spots there where I can't see, it could be pretty deep and I might just drop right down and then float down the river. Or I'll hit some of these large rocks that I also can't see and damage something real bad. Anyway, as you can see, the rain has stopped. It's supposed to be done for the next two or three days, but they're calling for snow on Tuesday. So Monday is my window of escape. Fortunately, just up this road, it's hard packed, so I don't get stuck on this, but uh, the people that I've been in contact with at Pine Flats, they're gonna call for a grader once the water goes down a little bit more, so. <sighs> I've been trapped here so long, it's starting to feel like this is all there is. There is, isn't any people. It's starting to feel like this was an apocalypse, this was the end, or some kind of huge natural nat natural disaster has taken place and cut me off from the rest of the world and my ability to move about. And I'm and I'm starting to think that I might never get out. That it could be uh, several more days before the water's low enough and the roads are dry enough for me to get out. I'm going to try and get out tomorrow, though. If it doesn't rain tonight, which I'm hoping it doesn't because there's blue sky, I'm going to venture down to the first river crossing and think about crossing it, make sure there isn't any rocks I'm going to get stuck on, and go have a look at the main crossing because this is just... Ugh. That right there... It's the sweet sound of rescue. I've never been so happy. Well, I, I've been happy, but I'm pretty happy about this. Just gonna clear out the creek and I should get out. few years back just at the corner here two or three hundred feet from where I'm camped there was a guy who was who was staying there and uh, the water came up and washed away his tent and nearly took him with it and then uh, further down the road towards Mare out by uh he didn't say big bug it was uh, I can't uh, somewhere over there where that drainage comes through, there was a guy, it was his birthday, he was intoxicated, he was driving his, he had his dogs with him and he, he attempted to cross it while it was flooded <laughs> in his one ton. Anyway, the water picked him up and just threw the vehicle like it was nothing. 200 feet, rolled it over, killed one of the dogs, he was lucky to get out alive. The grader came through and after I talked with him, he went back down in here and did a few more passes. And it looks like he's pushed all the material that was there to here. And that is a good thing because it'll slow the water. So when it hits this point, it won't be moving fast. It's moving faster over there, but by the time I get over there, I'm out. So I might not even need to get towed across. Clear skies this morning, clear skies all last night, nothing but stars, it's 8 a.m. Sunday morning, looks like there's only about six inches of water down there, 
and the roads feel pretty dry. It's a nice sunny day. I think the sight of the water dropping down, receding down two or three feet, there's only a few things more exciting than seeing this. Your very first date and waking up as a kid, eyes popping open at 5 a.m. on Christmas morning. In this case, my eyes popped open at 4 a.m. All right, here we go. Oh, there's a big rock. Oh, and we're through. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah. Howard and Susan, they were a great help. It would have been a really dark time to try and get through that without them coming down and seeing me every day and checking on me. And they even offered to let me, put me up at their place if things got bad, which was, which was very nice for complete strangers. And they're great neighbors. People up here are lucky to have them.